Hello, my name's Ian McCall and this is another video from the Dermoscopy Being Simple series. Today we're going to talk about blue nevi. They're very distinctive lesions, blue nevi. The colour sort of attracts you straight away. They're really a, a deep blue or almost a blue-black colour. They're made up of dendritic melanocytes set among collagen bundles in the dermis. Now, these dendritic melanocytes, in fact, come from neural crest cells in the uh, embryo. And they don't mature normally in the skin. It's the same cells that give rise to uh, other lesions such as Mongolian spot and nevus of otta and nevus of ito. Um, but we're just going to concern ourselves today with uh, the manifestation of these cells as blue nevi. Now, typically, the more dendritic, pigmented dendritic melanocytes that are there, the deeper the color is going to be. The more collagen that's going to be there, the more sclerosis, and so the whiter the blue nevus will be, because some, you know, they're a gray sort of blue color. Some can have pale areas within them. So I've said that the structureless blue-gray color is typical, but some of them can be almost black, and others can even be a sort of ready brown shade. Now, usually your typical blue nevus is seen on the face and neck, but there's one called the cellular blue nevus, and it's commonly found in the scalp. That's an example further down here. And the other thing you've just got to remember are the other blue lesions dermatoscopically, and that's mainly melanoma, pigmented basal cell skin cancer. But uh, there's a few other things, such as a foreign body, um, an apocrine hydrocystoma. There's a thing called a pilometric soma, I should have in there. There's a trichoblastoma, which is a sort of embryonal BCC. And even a hematoma can have that uniform bluey uh, gray color that makes you think it may be a blue nevus. So let's have a look at some of these archetypical blue nevi make this just a touch smaller. Head and neck, deep dermal melanin giving that deep blue color. There's the dermatoscopic view, no network. It's blue structureless. So this is a typical blue nevus in a child. Perfectly benign, you leave it. You don't have to take it out. Only very rarely does a blue nevus ever become malignant. And to be honest, I don't think I've ever seen one. Here's another blue nevus, bigger than the uh, other. This is up here on the temple. You can see this bluey gray region here with sort of areas coming out from it. Now, when you look at this again, it's a blue gray structureless filling the lesion. So there's a bit more sclerosis in this one, giving you these paler areas. These sort of out of focus areas coming out of a, a, a blue nevus aren't unusual. So don't let them uh, put you off. Here's another one here. This is quite a large blue nevus. And look at the pale area that's in fact within it. So I've said there, a mixture of blue and white structureless areas. And again, the degree of whiteness depends on the amount of dermal collagen that's going to be there. Here's a scalp lesion. It's bluish. You can see the accentuated follicular openings here. But when you put the dermatoscope on it, you see these vessels. They're serpentine. You get the impression they might be a bit branched as well. Um, and you might think, ah, this is a pigmented basal cell skin cancer because these are very much in focus, these vessels coursing over the surface of this. Now, it is it was in fact a cellular blue nevus, but um, serpentine vessels aren't uncommon in these. They're usually said to be a bit out of focus, but uh, these ones are very much in, in focus. So you can see how easy it might be to confuse it with a pigmented basal cell skin cancer. Remember I've said some other adnexal tumors, such as the trichoblastoma, the pilometric soma, which is usually seen on the face, and even if pigmented paroma may present like this, although paromas are usually uh, seen on the pans of souls. So, what else do we have here? 
Yeah, here's another one uh, in the scalp. Blue leaves in the scalp of an 18-year-old female. <laughs> There's just a little aside here. Notice the dyed hair. This bit dyed, this bit not. Um, and you got a mixture of blue and gray pigments in here, depending on the depth of the uh, dendritic melanocytes. And also, the other thing to note here are these little vessels, the little curved vessels that, you know, are a feature of dermal nevi. Well, they can be a feature of some cellular blue nevi uh, as well. Here's another interesting variant. <coughs> the main lesion here, and these other small ones coming off it. And this is known as an agmenated uh, blue nevus. Agmenated just means several uh, clustered collection of the same type of nevus in the one area of skin. Um, and you can see it with blue nevi. Typically, you can see it with spitz nevi. But there's a whole lot of uh, lesions in dermatology that are agmenate. It just means there's uh, a few of them form fruits around about the main lesion. Now, here's another one in a child. I mean, clinically looking at it, it looks very well defined. When you stick the dermatoscope on it, you start to get these lines coming out of it. Now, you might look at, you know, the edge isn't as rounded as, you'd, uh, as you might expect looking at it. And you might think that these are radial lines peripheral and that this might be a melanoma. Uh, you know, usually these radial lines, or, or what look like radial lines, but from the blue nevus, they're out of focus, whereas in a, a melanoma, they're usually very much in focus. Um, and anyway, this is a child, so you're not expecting a, a melanoma in these circumstances. And what else are we going to end up with? Well, here's another lesion that looks like a blue nevus. But this is relatively sudden onset. Most blue nevi come on in the second decade of life and uh, remain there for many, many years before slowly evolving. Um, so this had come on in a 90-year-old male. Now, even here, dermatoscopically, it looks somewhat like uh, a blue nevus, perhaps with a bit more sclerosis. But you've got this pinkish area around about it. I think if we have a close look at these vessels, um, which I can't in this resolution, you'll see that they're polymorphous. This was, in fact, um, uh, a metastatic melanoma. It had no connections with the overlying epidermis. It had previously had melanoma. So a melanoma metastasis can look like uh, a blue nevus as well. The other thing about blue nevi, and I should have an example here, but I haven't, is that they can sometimes be part of a combined nevus. It's not uncommon to have a blue nevus and, say, a compound or a dermal nevus um, together in the, in the same lesion, with often the blue nevus component in the center of the, uh, the lesion, where the cells are deeper. So, blue nevi, the uh, worry when you look at them is that you may mistake them for a melanoma, and some can be, you know, so much blue but black, um, and black structureless. But in the vast majority of cases, uh, it's fairly easy to diagnose a blue nevus with, well, just by the clinic, just by the clinical appearance, and the dermatoscope certainly aids you. Um, and they've been often been there for for many years. A malignant blue nevus is very rare. So, there's quite a lot uh, of blue nev in blue nevi. Remember the cellular blue nevus um, and the more typical one that you see uh, on the head and neck, often in younger people in the second decade. So that's us, blue nevi. Thank you very much.